F in the chat for 4ZR. EU legend. Let's see it. Let's see it. We're going to see the, the shots connect. Ready? Boom. Oh, my gosh. Jumps down. Takes a loot. Sweet, sweet surprise. Hits him with the sweet ching music. It's a 200 pump. Okay. Okay. Those of you guys are too young to understand what a sweet chin music is. Just Google it, okay? A lot of you guys like to look at the battle map. I love to look at the battle map, man. This gives us a lot of info on the players themselves and kind of lets us decide or figure out how it is that they played their game. So this would be the bus right here, this blue line up top, and this uh, this aqua line is the, the drop-in, okay? This is the drop-in on how he played this. Yo, what's up, guys? Monster D-Face here, and we're back with another Fortnite Battle Royale video. I've been commenting the FNCS qualifiers over the weekends. Week one just passed, and we're looking at the leaderboards right here. If you guys haven't already checked out my other VOD reviews, go and do that. And as always, make sure you subscribe to this channel, like it, comment who you want us to see covered, and of course your thoughts come into this kind of VOD review here. We're looking at this guy, this guy right here. This is Mitro. He dropped 20 games during the week one. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump in with his game number four, and we're gonna watch the full game. Then at the end, we'll cover his end games as well. Yo, I also just wanna let you know you guys are insane. Thank you for breaking 1,000 likes on all of my last videos. Let's get it. Now we're jumping in the bottom bus with Pre-Fired Kid, AKA Mitro, man. Mitro's using a random name, so it is what it is. Looks like someone's trying to 50-50 contest him for the first chest, but it's not gonna be enough. He's gonna get the scoop right here. And that guy's just barely gonna get away. Uh, While well, he's kind of hunting around right now. Let's go ahead and start loading up player outlines here. Okay, player outlines are on, great. We have names, perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I also noticed someone like in the comments section and I think what was my previous video was asking about how to turn on the HUD. You press the letter H, okay? The H is the HUD. Uh, the more you press H on your keyboard, it'll actually load up and you can see different uh, kind of segments here, so just a little FYI. I want to see if he's gonna W key Sky, so he knows where Sky is right now, right? He just pinpointed Sky. She's down there. Obviously, it's usually where she spawns at. When we watch Big Sixty, he would literally W key Sky every single time, and it looks like the good players do. Like literally, the good players seem to like set up to just straight up attack Sky. So he's gonna get all the dibs right now. Boom. Grappler's his. The assault rifle's his. He's getting pressured right now by the bots. And now he gets access to the vault. Very interesting to see how he's going to play this out. Remember, there are enemies here. We have still two players here. No shield either, by the way. Or actually, he has 50 shield, but... I meant that more so as like he didn't have a, a cache, but now he's got a nice little cache of loot. He's got options. So the way we see some other players play this, they immediately exit out with a grappler. I know for a fact that like Mitro and duos would stay here and literally grief players from accessing the vault. So I want to see if he's going to do the same right now. The fact that he's even willing to stay, like, literally sit here right now is kind of sketchy to me. Remember, the longer you stay in the POI, you're like, you're not looting and stuff like that. Also, fun fact, he's using the axe that is now disabled in Fortnite during this competition. This pickaxe, and you guys, feel free to let me know how you feel about it, is uh, technically an exploit because when you run around with it, other enemies can't hear your footsteps. So, kind of, kind of interesting how I feel like competitive players would do anything to get an advantage, bro. Like, big facts. So, I don't see a launch pad in this inventory. So, is this one of the few moments when you open up the drop crate and you don't get a launch pad? That's so unfortunate, man. Remember, most players play these major POIs so that you can actually get the, gre like, the greatest loot, right, in the lobby. And the one thing about the, the agency POIs is that they have the crates. The same kind of airdrop that always comes down from the sky. Those things guarantee, they're supposed to guarantee launch pads. So if the launch pad didn't fall out, it's definitely a bug. Just remember that. 
Just remember that. It's kind of interesting that Mitro also knows about this pickaxe bug before, like, it kind of went public, I feel like. Okay, so he took the loot, and now he's just dipping, man. He's getting out of here. Okay. Player across the water still trying to give him some pressure over at the shark. But he's gone, man. He is long gone, dude. Get his farm on right now. What are your options here? Okay. I respect the campfire, of course. Want to get your health up to max. We already know he's going to push up towards this lighthouse here. And there's a player. There's a player over to his left-hand side now by the exit of the porta potty This guy doesn't have a clue that he's rotating into the path of Mitro. Because if he was smart, he probably wouldn't be coming this way, to be honest. At least that's how I see it. There's a blue pump right there. What, an, what a find, dude. Oh, this guy actually wants the action. He's coming over here on purpose. Because he definitely heard Mitro come up. So he's actually trying to see if he can 50-50 for the grappler. This is so sketch, man. Mitro just so happens to jump down. They have no idea how close they are to one another right now. Oh, now, now, now. Okay, okay, hold up. The enemy that's behind him... Take a look, take a look. The enemy that's behind him, he knows now, right? Yup. He knows now. Who are you? Who are you, guy? We're gonna we're gonna watch from his perspective because if you miss, my man, just know your 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 game's over. Okay, this is his one shot to ever kill Mitro ever. I I respect it. I respect it, bro. I respect. It. He's gonna hit some really big shots. Okay, Mitro's gonna play on the back foot now. Let's go. We got ourselves a fair fight. We're in .75 motion right now. So we can watch everything that's about to go down. So you let Mitro get one mini off. That's already kind of bad. Goes for the little crank. Doesn't even need the grapple to take it. He made it way too easy. And now this dude's trying to go for the pickaxe. Mitro already popped off the second mini, by the way. So he is chilling right here. He does a double check on the mini again. This player is standing underneath what would be an area that Mitro kind of controls. Just that pressure in its own is going to buy Mitro the 10 seconds he needs right now. Let's go ahead and pop this med kit. And all of a sudden, we're back to square one. And this dude who's on a, the attacking right now, Starly EU, he's on the he's on the back foot, man. He's on the back foot. He's going to get cracked for 75, tries to make the aggressive edit. Tries to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. This is not going to be enough. GG's. 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 Should have had him when he had the uh, the offensive pressure. Probably shouldn't have jumped down and got to the walls. Maybe just gone for the cone control first. The fact that he let Mitro exit out the back and then crank up to height just to reset the whole fight. That's so unfortunate for him. Now, we'd expect Mitro to go for like some mid-game fights, but just according to this... Like, this is, this is like a really slow mid-game, so um, we're going to speed through it. And remember, we're still going to cover the other end games in this, like, coverage here. Let's go ahead and uh, kind of skip on through. Let's see what it is that Mitro ends up kind of acquiring, right, during this course of time here. This is all still very, very much important. I see a launch pad in his inventory now, which is kind of nice. And these are, these are still things that you guys, as players, have to think about. What do you do when you catch zone? What do you do when you don't have to like make this big rotate as usual, right? Take a look at the world map here. He has zone, man. So I actually like that he's, how do I say it? Not like browsing deeper into the world when he doesn't have to. Instead, he's coming back to his home territory. I think most players that catch zone play like this, but I, I would not be surprised if there is a chunk of people out there that don't know how to play the game when they catch zone, right? Like, play into your territory. Play into the area you know. Um, and that's what Mitra's doing right now. So, he's going to come across another player here. It's going to be Potra. And uh, we'll, we'll slow it down a little bit. He'll take some pop shots. He doesn't quite connect. 
And man, just the, the fact that he can back up, disengage with the grappler whenever he wants, do things like that to catch players off guard. It's kind of cheese, man. It's kind of strong. What he wants, though, is he wants to cap off on flops and whatnot. He wants to get what he can. Obviously, he can see the same way we can see these uh, fishing spots off in the distance here. So he's just going to back on up right now. Get some more flops. Go ahead and cap off his loadout. So good. He's going to go in and face check the bush. No biggie. No problem. Working on maxing out his material. So there is a spot here to gain metal, of course. But it's probably already taken over by the players that land here in these islands. And look, dude, there's more fishing spots. And there was a fight over at the one spot that you can grab their metal all here. And you can see right up here, there's still that right there, that little wing. This is like the this is the island that has the metal. But there's always going to be a fight here because players will uh, rotate into that. Players that play this area. I want to see if Mitra ends up pushing over this. I see an enemy there. There's certain areas on loot paths, like in general, that are highly likely for you to have engagements. In those areas, that's where you map out storm surge that's where you map out uh you know ambush plays or you know ambush frags that right there that island is definitely one of them uh, ma mainly because of the fact that there's metal there there's just no metal otherwise it, like in this general area um unless you hit a landmass over at sweaty sands or you you know you go over to like pleasant park and see if there's anything left over so it's kind of something to think about most of the metal on the rest of kind of this area is just not that good. It's like subpar. It's mediocre. So I feel like this is unprecedented for Micho, who's like being so passive right now, right? He's playing this right now for endgame. And I respect it, man. I respect it so much because he pushed over. And he didn't really want to fight at the lighthouse. That guy snuck up on him and kind of forced his hand. And he took the fight. When he came back to the shark, he was trying to see if he can get some leftover loot. Maybe find a freebie fight, but... You know what I mean? This is kind of where he ended up. I think what he's doing is he's trying to do something similar to what we saw with Big 60's gameplay where if this player, Portra, crosses the water and Mitro catches him out in the open, bro, he's going to delete him. Right? He's going to absolutely delete him. That's kind of interesting right there. He's going to throw his one slurpfish off to the side. There's still a fishing spot right there. No, nah, man. If Mitro would have just waited like two more seconds, bro, he would have been chilling here. But instead, he's going to tag him to make this guy go on defense. He's going to go for the fishing spot here. Ooh, that's a nice find, but not for someone who has a mythic assault rifle. Feels bad. Feels bad, man. Okay. So he's got control of the island. Zone's coming in. It's uh, game time to pretty much cap out. Of course, he's going to drop the fishing rod here. There's no reason for him to leave behind. No reason for him to leave behind a swordfish. He's vibing here. 200 medium bullets, right? He's got some shotgun ammunition. Like, he's good, bro. He's so good. There's another fishing spot right there. He's thinking about it. He's trying to figure out a way right now. How can he fish this? And also, if he moves from here, then he will probably have to base up and build. He's probably going to encounter someone, so... Instead of taking risk right now, he's mitigate, uh, minimizing his risk by staying on the islands because he has zone here. Um, little does he know there's a player on the island over here, right? It's tasty. He doesn't have any shield. I wait into uh, catch someone off guard, but this is still this is still very very kind of cool from someone as good as Mitro, someone who's playing for straight up positioning, someone who like you guys at home might be trying to focus on prioritizing placement and how to play zone. He is literally abusing the fact that he has zone right now, abusing the fact that he has um, some crazy mobility by just staying behind, right? Not moving into the safety of the next zone too soon, not really playing for the middle of the zone because he can, but more so just playing off the fact that he has zone, bro. There's no one behind him. That's cool. I can respect that. Definitely respect that. And he's doing it again right now. He's just sitting back here intentionally because he can. Um... I would say the main reason why he's even moving around right now is probably because he wants to keep his fingers warm, but not because, you know what I mean? He's really looking to do anything otherwise. Because he could easily just sit in a box like the guy below him and just chill. 
Uh, same like this guy right here, right? Like, he can easily just chill. Oh, this is Caxi. Okay, so now he's pushing up on Caxi. So he sees a player in front of him. This is so risky for him to move across right here where he can't build. Caxi... Caxi just wasn't paying attention, though, man. Mitra is going to whiff the shots, but, man, Caxi was not paying attention, bro. The fact that Mitra was even able to cross the water like that, that was kind of risky. Notice now, Mitro backs up into Caxi's old builds, so he's using these builds against, against Caxi now. Oh, man, having a grappler and playing distance is so, so filthy, man. So filthy. Little things like that, using your enemy builds. Little things like that, bro. And I know, it's a mythic weapon. It's really good. And it's good for a reason, man. You're seeing it all unfold, man. You're seeing it unfold. Oh, no way. This boy just got blanked. Lady Luck was on his side, bro. Lady Luck was on his side. That would have been the run right there. Yo. All right. Hey, it's a little bit of luck in, in life in general, you know? A little bit of luck. Sometimes that's, that's just how life goes, bro. Sometimes that is how life goes. Actually, I can fix the skin bug if I just fast forward just a little bit. Let's see. We already know what he's doing here. He's cutting across. Hopefully he doesn't get tagged and we miss some action. Oh, there it is. Sick, dude. All right, cool. What's the name of this skin? Does anyone in the Twitch chat know? What's the name of this guy's skin right here? I want to use it for my thumbnail later. This is a dope looking skin. I didn't buy this one. Little bobhead tomboy looking at. Alright. What's up, yo? This is a stack. This is a stack little zone right now, bro. We're we're coming into zone wave four, so we're not even half and half out. And this is a stacker, bro. Not only that, bro, it's so spread out. Gambit Toos is in this game. Nikoff is in this game, bro. Wolfies. This is such a stacker. Mongrel Dollar. This is a stacker, bro. Alright, he kind of catches zone right here. This is the Echo, bet, bet. <laughs> Yo, one in the chat if you like the tomboy looking at <laughs> Echo skin. Yo, this is a cool skin, man. It's a cool skin. All right, let's go. Let's go, let's go. He's crossing over. He's chilling, man. He's made his way all the way to end game. He's doing it on purpose too, by the way. He's literally playing for end game. Little Benji Fishy is in this game, man. I know, dude. Xerox is right there. Okay, okay. No way. I saw M10 Pepper down there next to Benji, next to Toos. My gosh, it's such a sad game. Yo, I know I already did a VOD review on Benji, but like, I kind of want to do another one. I don't know how interested you guys would be in that. Um, This is for everyone here in the chat. Also for everyone watching at home. Bro, if you guys want more Benji Fishy, like his actual FNCS games, let me know. Drop it in the comments. Just let me know, man. I, I think I do want to review him. I think I do want to review him. These FNCS games are so good. I mean, he came first place. I kind of feel like we have to give him some more tribute. But I, I like this. Uh, Mitro's getting super active right now. He's actually forcing the players to focus on players rotating late in the game. This is what this is what grapple players do, though. They get to zone, and they, they can just like start changing the tide on players that rotate late. Here's, here's a bit of advice that I'd give to players right now. Um, this is something that everyone can kind of like think of, right? If you were in this game, okay, think about this. The thing about the grapple player is that they can be anywhere, right? So you, you can't really anticipate for the grapple player to be where he is, but you can kind of guess. A grapple player that's going to be passive at the very least is going to be on the upper half, right? It's either going to be center or the upper half. So if you're playing off the map, and you're coming from Pleasant, you're coming from Craggy, you're coming from anywhere, Sweaty, Holly, any of these outer edges, and your rotation so happens to bring you up towards the upper kind of portion of the map, I think you got to rotate early, man. I think it's important for you to rotate early because a player, like a grappler player who's going to get to zone, bro, they're going to grief anyone on the outside. Like, I think it's... <laughs> I think it's a tendency... Like, literally, it's it's very likely to happen if you're on this upper half. So, um, I would just suggest if you're up here to be, like, super cautious, you probably want to rotate early, bro. That's just something to think about. 
Oh no, how'd I end up on Benji Fishy, bro? Yo, we'll review you later, dude. Chill. Right, let's go. Let's go back. Here we go. Alright. 50 seconds till half and half out. 50 seconds till half in, half out. That's when things are gonna get real good, man. These rotations are still good too, though. This is still important. One interaction makes a difference in your game. Also notice, I like that he goes in a cone right now. He's playing it so safe, bro. He's been playing it safe this entire time. Just, he's just playing it safe in a way. Yep, going for information instead of sitting like in the safety. I want to. I want to say this. He came into this mid game with not a lot of ammunition, and he's been like being very methodical with how he spams players. Because you got to think about it. If you want to play for height, you can't spend your mid game spamming people. You can't. You have to be smart. You have to be smart with your ammunition. Unless you're like literally looking to go box fight someone, you should not be spamming players, bro. Should not be spamming players, man. And if you're gonna play for height, you need you need ammo. You gotta think about that in the long run, man. If you're playing for height, bro, you need ammo. Or your height is your height is useless. I thought for a second, I thought Mitra was going to grief and just pickaxe that guy's ramp out. No way he lands on top of Mongrel for a second. Mongrel immediately bases up. Ooh. Almost saw a big engagement right there. Okay, he sees loot over here. Remember, he never got the chance to actually loot up. Dang, bro. He just cheekily picks up mad loot right there. Trades out the blue pump for the tactical. I respect that. I really do. I think the tactical shotgun is just underrated grossly. All right, little upgrade, bro. Now he's at max material. My gosh. Now he's at max material, man. All right, here's Cubics. He's going to get tagged once right there. The crazy thing about these FNCS games over the weekend, bro, they weren't even Storm Surge games on the first zone. But, like, second zone almost always has Storm Surge. So many second zones, Storm Surge. Or, like, second wave of Storm Surge. When there's more than 50 players in the lobby, there were Storm Surge at that point. I feel like the best of the best players literally cleaned up the fodder, dude. Like, cleaned up the bots, bro. Got them out of there. Dropped their players off the POIs. And then after that, everyone played, like, for endgame. It was, it was actually such an interesting dynamic, man. I feel like that's how cash cups should be, you know? I would love to see cash cups get to that point. It's where players take it seriously, bro. You double key off the bat, but maybe then you slow it down, you know? The FNCS was really good quality of games. They weren't too stacked, but they weren't dead, bro. In my opinion. Okay. We have someone on height. It's Bad Sniper who has high ground right now. Zone is going to pull to Mitro. Mitro can do two different things here. He can launch pad this one. Or he can wait till last uh, wait till last second and like grapple across. He can he, he has a lot of options here, bro. Okay, so he's just going to grapple. He's going to grapple across. He's going to go for height right now. Is he going to crank for it? He is absolutely going to. He's going to make sure he alphas for height. That's Mongrel who he shoots right there. Now he's going to cut over to Mongrel. Perfect. Sit right on top of Mongrel. Because you don't want to ramp out from across. You don't have to, right? Sitting on a, a flat top up top. Very nicely done. This catches a free pick right there. This is where things are really going to start getting cooking right here. Okay, he's just using enemy builds. Bad Sniper doing a nice little two ramp tarp. We can learn something from this too. Let's look at this, guys. Here's, here's, here's something very interesting. Also kind of risky, right? If you think about it. But we're just going to go back here. Let's go back to like... Uh, Hold up. Let's go back to when he got this first Elim right here. Not this one. This one's uh, this one's cutting us forward. We're going to go back here. We're going to go back here. And remember, guys, we're using the replay client, so it's going to buffer. It's going to do those weird things. Uh, don't worry about it. Take a look. Right here. If you are basically second to height or leading out on the push, you can do two ramp tarps, man, and be mad safe. Why is this? This is actually... Uh, okay, so if I right-click a player. So look look at Bad Sniper. Bad Sniper's playing this really well right now, bro. He's only two ramp tarping. And this is like kind of having him chill on material right now. 
I'm gonna play this here. Yeah, look at that. He pauses when he needs to, but since he's like the only player basically on second height, bro, he can do this. And lucky for him, he's not even getting targeted from up above. So if you're not getting targeted, bro, this is why two ram tops tarps are like so important, bro. Look, he's just chilling right now, dude. Most players right there would be like panicking. You know what I mean? Panicking. But if you're second high, bro, and they're not like messing with you, like, or you got a nice little angle you're cutting across, those two ram tarps, bro. But that's what I said. There is a risk. Leave your sides open. Bad sniper did not react fast enough. You can't even you can't even be mad. Alright, you can't even be mad. He got away with it the first time, he got greedy with it the second time. But he did not react fast enough. Krusty goes down. Man, Micho's just making this easy, bro. This is his end game right here. He's got the height. He's not top of save it. Yo, save it was in this lobby too. My gosh. The player in the zone right now. Benji Fishy catches the Elam in the feed. Oh, he's got his eyes on Benji. He's got his eyes on Benji. Bye bye, Benji. We'll be seeing ya. Dang. He had his eyes on first place, bro. Feels like deja vu. Players on height looking into those kind of bushes. There goes Wolfies. He took Benji down. Is he going to take Wolfies down? Oh my gosh. Dinks flutter moist. No one's, no one's even focusing on him, man. One RPG can like literally kind of cost this game because that'll that'll take a chunk of match. Not a single player RPG's height. Man, sometimes, sometimes the lobby just gives it to you, bro. Sometimes the lobby just gives you a free height. Look, that guy had an RPG on low ground the whole time. The whole time you had a rocket launcher. He didn't, he did not once look up. Mitro is taking candy from the babies right now, bro. High ground grappler. No one even giving him a run for his money. Not even remotely close because no one's trying to contest. With RPGs and stuff like that. It's the strength, man. The strength of the shark. Like, I don't even understand why people were, like, going crazy over the grotto. Come on, Wolfies. Yeah, that rocket launcher, bro. I don't know why people go crazy over the grotto when, like, shark solos. Man. Man, it's so crazy, bro. Perfect, dudes. All right, beautiful. We are still going to watch his... Uh, I still want to watch his landing spot. We're going to cover his beginning, and then we're going to jump like towards the half and half out. See how it plays out for him. Let's get it. So, he definitely lands for this spot all the time. This is his drop spot. He goes for big chest on the cliff. This time he gets a shotgun. That could have been really bad. The enemy landed on something better, like an AR close by. Respect, respect. Pushes right in for the side chest. Gets a blue AR. That's nice. Now he's jumping in for the bottom chest right underneath the cliff here. Cool. The layout was changed a little bit, so there's a hole here now. This is actually really good. He's going to pick up some minis here. What's he got? Four players landed with him? Two players? Oh, it's so unfortunate getting tagged right there. Okay, he makes an instant edit right now. Remember, he was tagged, so he needs to drink this. There it is. Also, that player went for what would be these kegs here. So that player has at least 30 shield. Not counting if they already had shield. So, like, you got to think about it from Mitro's mind. He knows that players have shield, and he still jumped in there. You know what I mean? Kind of thug life it. Mitro also has an empty spot right now. He's not even... You know interested at all and in picking up okay at that moment would have been the smg a little triple dink goes toe to toe with sky oh my gosh that's so scary but he's gonna win the engagement and once again he takes control of the key card the grappler and everything else here at the shark nicely done nicely done nicely done 
He's going to get one Elim here. After that, we'll look at his battle route. And then we'll jump into uh, half in, half out and see how he plays half in, half out. Ooh, who's going to be the victim? Blizz or Dietrich? He's kind of surrounded right now. Oh, he's getting pushed in? No way. Dietrich starts to go for the 50-50 right now. Wow. What were you thinking, dude? Micho. You should have known better trying to build a ramp behind him right there, but that was muscle memory, dudes. We've all been here before. Let's go back in time just one second. Actually, this this is this is kind of uh it's kind of funny to me because like I feel like even the best the best does this. You know what I mean? We're gonna play it in a little bit of slow motion. Even the best of the best, you know what I mean? Has muscle memory kick in. Whether you like whether you want to or not. Right here, ready? Boom. Turns around. Whoa, whoa, what do you think you're gonna do? You think you're gonna build a ramp behind you, kid? Nope. That little look down, he tried to build a ramp behind him. I respect it. I respect it. Let's see how this goes out. Oh no way. Was that a purple pump? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I was going to say, I know exactly what he wants to do. He wants to go toe-to-toe -to -toe for the broken wall. I like that. Just pre-fire that corner. You'll do a lot of damage. Ooh. Okay, okay. He's trying to drink his big pot right now. Drink the big pot. So he got five-second big pot off. This is this is kind of cool. This guy Blizz thinks that he's gonna run out of material, but like, I think Blizz forgot that he got like he got to pick up the mats, dude. If anything, Blizz might be out of mats, bro. If Blizz didn't get Elims. I like that. Mitro baits the the fight here to get out of the vault, so he actually successfully escapes. I got a feeling. I was going to say, I got a feeling Mitro's just going to, like, disengage because he doesn't want to throw the game. But who knows, man? Having this purple pump, you kind of have an advantage. Oh, so risky. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, no. Falls down, slips. Doesn't catch a shot. Gets coned on. Almost gets double edited on. So lucky that Blizz went for the double edit. But Mitro's body was inside of it. And he wasn't actually... Uh, Blizz wasn't prepared for that. That actually worked out in his favor, bro. The phase right there. Because Mitro will probably be dead right now. Yeah, he's actually losing this fight. So he respects Blizz so much that he actually backs all the way out. He respects it so much he backs all the way up. Smart, smart on Mitra. Look what he's doing. He's targeting the wall, not the cone uh, or not the floor above. He breaks the wall. You break the structure. It breaks the top as well. Smart, smart, smart. He just did a little fake out right there. I like it. I like the mind games, dude. I like the mind games. It's the little things, guys. All right, cool. He respects Blizz so much, he gives him the rest of the grotto so that he can get his loot on, catch up to the game. Remember, he's got the, the storm to work against, right? Let's uh, let's see what's up. Let's see what's up. We're going to fast forward it a little bit. This is a good game. This game is really good, actually. All right. So he's gonna get into another fight sometime soon. Uh, before that happens, though, let's uh, slow it down. Let's take a look at the battle bus route real quick, because this thing just looks so darn cool. It's gonna show us where the game's gonna end. Okay, it's gonna cut all the way across to the farms here. He's basically just gonna have a, a straight cut all the way across. Something happens right here where he's gonna be jumping back and forth, but I'm assuming that's where he gets this elim right here. Um, that's the grappler. You know what I mean? This is the the pathing of a grappler, dude. <laughs> all right. 
Let's jump back into it. Let's get up here. That is the grappler, man. No way. Someone's in the bush right here. Bro, the things you see in the replay mode, though. <laughs> the things you see in the replay mode, bro. I know this is going to be someone in the comments like, bro, that'd be me, though. That'd be me in the bush. That'd be me, bro. Oh, my gosh. That'd be Mitro too. Oh, oh, it'd be Mitro too, bro. <laughs> so lucky. Now, now he still has Blizz's focus over there and the guy that's underneath him. My gosh. It do be like that, though. <laughs> it do be like that, man. Okay, okay. Mitro is using his plunger gun to move back now. He's going to cross pass with the player right in front of him. Gutsy, gutsy, gutsy. Finishes the farm. No respect to the guy in front of him. No respect. And Minzo. Minzo doesn't fight him, so Mitro senses weakness. He can smell the fear. Leaking out of Minzo's corpse already, dude. Boom. Surprise, surprise. Okay, he gets shot in the back here. No way. Mitro goes for a peek with no shield. Bro, he doesn't respect Minzo at all. He could have easily popped minis. He did not respect Minzo at all, bro. I could tell he didn't. Just because Minzo didn't shoot at him and let him farm for free. And then rotated. Oh my gosh, bro. And then honestly, now, now that I'm thinking about it, now that I think about it, bro. And then he rotated. <laughs> this is kind of funny, but I shouldn't be laughing at pros because they will smoke me in a 1v1. But okay, Micho's farming, right? Minzo's coming up. Just trying to do his thing. Trying to rotate to uh, short side of zone. I respect it. Instead of putting pressure on him, he's still trying to go around. Like he's still disengaging. From Mitro. And hence why Mitro's like, yo, bro, I don't respect you. Pushes him right away. Dang, son. Dang, son. Okay, okay. Zoom in and back out. Zoom back out. Let's get back to it. The dis the disrespect. Okay. We know what's gonna happen now. He's gonna rotate straight literally to zone. Let's get to half and half out. Let's see how Mitro plays it. Uh, it should be around here. It should be around here. This is zone three. Let's get to that zone. Zone five. We want to get to zone four into five. Okay, here we go. Zone four into five. This is where I like to be, my boys. So he pushes over to the farm. My gosh, we got ourselves another stacker. This one's heavily congested on the southern portion. This is what you expect. Also, what you expect is the main house to have a lot of players because of the refarm capabilities. Interesting to see no one claimed the side houses, though. Ah, oh, okay. But main house is hella stacked. Okay, okay. Let's see how it plays out. You can see, you can see the movement. You can definitely see the movement over there. See the movement, man. Okay. Here's Blizz. Dude, is he still fighting Blizz? My gosh. Oh, two dinks. I like that Mitro actually... Like, he does, some, he does some crazy things, right? He pushes players. But once he's invested this much time in the game, he starts playing smart. He's not playing reckless no more. He's playing smart. He tagged those guys, basically forcing them to, you know, square up on top of one another. Hence meaning that if he goes to zone now, he is, like, essentially guaranteed a free grief on these guys. Guaranteed a free grief. Because he's already in zone, he's already tagged them, and now he's forcing them to do, like, just weird stuff on top of each other. Like, sit on top of one another. It's, like, guaranteed a free grief right here. He's either going to get it or someone's going to steal this Elim, right? That's how it's going to work out. 
kind of interesting, though. The hayfield does make it kind of difficult. Okay. He's Blizz in the air first. Oh, my. Oh, my. I told you, bro. You're just guaranteed a free grief. No way. Does he get a second one? If he keeps firing at this guy, the rest of the lobby will do it. But he only has 50 reloads. I'm actually thinking he might jump on this guy for the loot. I'm thinking he might get him griefed and then go down there. Not kidding. We'll see. He needs to do something. You can't hold height with, you know what I mean? 30 bullets. Like, it's not going to work out in the long run. He's actually got 40 reloads, man. Wavy Jacob, what's up, baby? We're looking at Mitro in the solos right now. We're on the second end game. I, I forgot. He's got that rocket launcher, too. Like, this thing isn't even set up like that. Like, he can straight up break that one ramp and, like, one RPG probably dismantles this whole guy's thing right here. Oh, he pulls half in, half out? Dude, I see CRR down there, too. Wow. Okay. Half in, half out with only 40, 40 bullets to reload with? Oh, my gosh. No way. He almost deleted Benji, bro. I think Benji was one body shot away, by, but right, like right there. Here's gems out in the open on the side. He really, honestly, he only wants to tag people in the air. And I, I get it because more players are likely to tag other players in the air. So they're probably very likely to be weak. Instead of targeting players that are like doing these free ground tarps with this very limited ammunition, he's instead looking to focus not on anyone he can shoot, but on players who are in the air. I like that. It's like a little little tendency of Mitro gameplay right now. Here, here it is. Look, another player in the air. He's only hitting players in the air. It is for a reason. It's working. Bro. Respect. Is that his third one already? Last ammunition now. Where do you go to get loot? Where do you go to find medium bullets? Do you just wait and let it come to you? He's got the RBG. He's got the pump. He can do some things. That. Is it that one? No. He doesn't even care. He doesn't even look. He doesn't even look. He's waiting, bro. Being patient. He wants it to come to him, bro. He's probably going to use what's left in his gun to literally either one, grief a player when they're like not noticing. Like He's just going to pump AR, get in someone's box. Or he's just going to wait for the loot to come to him, bro. Yeah, all of our VOD reviews, most of them, make it to YouTube, man. This one is definitely going to go up. If you're late, don't worry about it, bro. If you're late, don't worry about it. We'll be uploading this bad boy. I got you guys. Dude, he pulled he pulled half in, half out. And now he pulled uh, first movement, so. He can wait or he can tarp and then see if someone gets into his tarp. What if he waits for someone to like... Oh, he's, he's looking at height, bro. He wants height. Yeah? With 30 bullets? No. Oh. With 30 bullets? No way. All right, last magazine right there. Took height with 30 bullets. What do you do with height with 30 bullets? Is he just going to wait till end game, bro? He's going to like... Literally first shot accuracy players. RPG them down and force them to fight. Like, oh my. Who, who am I kidding? You have, you have Sky's Assault Rifle. Bye bye, Stompy. We'll be seeing you, kid. The disrespect, bro. The disrespect, bro. Four bullets. Takes out Stompy. How many? Yo, how many kills is he going to get with one magazine? There's no way, bro. There's no way. Ooh, ooh. Ooh, okay, okay. You have 12 left, bro. Take it easy. There goes Benji Fishy. Benji's in the target, bro. That was dirty. He set Benji up. Shot the wall right there. Snuck the RPG in. I respect it. 
Nah, nah, that was a good play. That was a good play. That was a good play. I'll run that back. There's a lot of people that actually like don't really think about this kind of stuff. This is this is a simple, like a simple strategy, but this is a real strategy, guys. Okay? It's a real strategy. Um, take notes on this one. Easy. Easy. For any of you guys that play RPGs in your loadout, I know some people don't. They avoid it like the plague. Take a look. Weakens the wall, right? So it's nice and blue. Pop pop. Boom. It's like literally, literally, like having a heavy sniper. It's kind of dirty. It's kind of dirty. It's pretty nice. It's consistent. And uh, yeah, he's doing it with what's like literally left of his, you know, ammunition. I like that. Hit Benji with it. All right. He's making the most of his rockets. Now he's forcing players down. I don't know why he's forcing players down right now. Um, he needs to connect to these guys or like literally find a frag. So he should be looking to kill players with the RPG and pick some loot up. This could be it. Pump RPG. Close. Close, close, close. One more rocket. You need a you need a pump RPG, bro. He needs something right now. He needs something. He's slowly but surely running out of plays up here. It's either you stay up here and you try to go for like, you know, you play for second place, first place. Or you go for the frags. Alright, now that he's out of RPGs, he only has a shotgun to work with right now. Two bullets in the AR. He's looking for a shotgun shot. He's just cruising, bro. He's just going to cruise his way through. 18. It's just not much he could do. So silly, right? Watching someone on Hyatt that can't fire back. This is like the, this is the bad feeling right here. Okay, okay. What you going to do, bro? You know where he's at. What you going to do? You see him right there. Yeah, no, nah, it's too close for comfort. He's got too good of an angle. It's too good of an angle, man. Too good of an angle. Okay, wall busting. All blues. All blues. Yeah, he's playing for the points now, man. It's the only thing he can do. No way. Yo, you only had two bullets, my man. Only had two bullets and you, you actually hit? There it is. He's finally got the medium. Oh! The unreloaded gun for ZR eats the big pump. Ha! No. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. That's drum gun. He found rockets, bro. Tucking them around. You already know. This is like his last build right here. Bro, he, he's going for the RPG reload. I respect it. He didn't have any ammo. He was willing to play the 50-50 with the no HP. That was kind of dirty. I feel bad he did 4ZR like that, though. It was kind of crazy, man. You have to do 4ZR like that, bro. <laughs> you have to do him like that. Here, let's run it back. Get a little F in the comments section for Mitro. Vod review ski. All right, we're going to run this back right here. F in the chat for 4ZR. EU legend. Let's see it. Let's see it. We're going to see the, the shots connect. Ready? Boom. Oh my gosh. Jumps down. Takes a loot. Sweet, sweet surprise. Hits him with the sweet ching music. It's a 200 pump. Okay. Okay. Those of you guys are too young to understand what a sweet chin music is. Just Google it. Okay.